friends welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat West Bengal India this is a cataract with grade 3 nuclear sclerosis in this case I am going to demonstrate the stop and chop technique of hecamulsification stop and chop technique is a beautiful technique this is midway between divide and conquer and direct chop so after doing a direct chop for few months one can try this technique and in this technique we learn both we learn to make a trench we learn to hold the nuclear pieces and chop the nuclear pieces so after doing stop and chop for a few months a fresh surgeon can go for direct chop by this time the main incision and a side port on the left side of the main incision has been made and the tripan blue dye is applied underneath an air bubble to stain the anterior capsule the dye is being washed out at this moment and now 2% SPMC is injected into the anterior chamber and the SPMC is applied over the cornea for better visibility yes it improves the visibility a lot and does a little bit more magnification and now with the help of the uterator forceps the anticapsule is torn and a capsular tag is held with the uterator and an adequate size trixis of about 5.5 millimeter is done so this is a very good rexis we will see at the end of the surgery that the anterior capsular rim will overlap the optic of the intraocular lens all around now hydro dissection hydro dissection is being done very gently small amounts of fluid is being injected at multiple points and see the nucleus didn't rotate so some more hydrodissection some more injection of fluid is done and then the nucleus rotates and now some more visco and this is the time to introduce the tip of the phaco needle since I'm going to make a trench the vacuum is very low only 80 millimeter of mercury flow rate is also low only 20 ml per minute and ultrasonic energy is set at 60 percent but 60 percent ultrasonic energy will not be required in most of the time after aspirating some superficial cortical lens matter the handpiece is turned to make the bubble up and now the trench is started at this time take care that you must cut and move you must not move without cutting if you move without applying energy you will just push the nucleus towards 6 o'clock and there will be genular tear so just make a deep trench and I have rotated it 180 degree to get a nice depth all around and here it is the nucleus is being divided into two heminuclei yes the nucleus is completely separated the heminuclei are completely 
separated from each other and now I go to FECO2 mode hold the nucleus and chop FECO2 mode means high vacuum mode vacuum is 400 millimeter of mercury flow rate is 40 ml per minute and I'm going to hold the nuclear pieces and chop them into smaller pieces and then emulsify the pieces this is the other heminucleus see the nuclear this is the periphery is so soft that I, I'm not able to chop it however the heminucleus tumbles and I just cut it with the ultrasonic energy and emulsify the smaller pieces at this time to emulsify the nucleus probably only 30 percent ultrasonic energy is being used so the nucleus and epinucleus has been nicely managed and now we have to remove the cortical lens matter I'm going to use a 23G Simco cannula to remove the cortical lens matter. I have made only one side port and I am not going to use bimanual irrigation aspiration because I don't have another side port. The side port is little wider but it is only one side port and the side port is 90 degree away from the main incision it means the astigmatism induced by the main incision is neutralized to some extent by the white side port and now is the time to implant an intraocular lens this is a totally unedited recording let us see how to fold the lens Yes, the lens is placed in the cartridge. The haptics and the optic both should be in the groove. And then we close the flaps, close the wings, place the cartridge in the injector, push the piston and feel the resistance. If it moves freely without resistance, that means the haptics are free and now it is always better to enlarge the main wound little bit to about 3 millimeter if we are using this kind of cartridge otherwise the lens may get stuck at the wound and the wound may get stressed too much yes the lens has gone into the capsular bag now the irrigating probe is used for some time to remove the visco that was in the lumen of the cartridge. This is hydro implantation and we are saving a lot of time because we don't have to remove the visco. The visco is very minimal visco was there in the lumen of the cartridge that has already come out. And now one more thing has happened. There is conjunctival chemosis in this case. And I'm going to use a 18 gauge needle to make three punctures onto the chemosed conjunctiva to release the fluid. This is one puncture. And this is another one about 180 degree away. And this is another puncture about 90 degree away and this fluid will drain out very quickly we don't have to express out the fluid it will come out in few minutes and now I'm going to do a final lavage of the anterior chamber because some visco sticks to the corneal endothelium unless we direct a gentle stream of bases towards the cornea this visco doesn't come out 
and here it is coming out and I go behind the eye well once and irrigate the bag and then I form the anterior chamber very nicely with the Simco and then come out. Check the integrity of the wounds. Apply a few drops of moxifloxacin over the ocular surface and then conclude the case. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Always go in this order. Do lot of cases by divide and conquer technique. Then many more cases by this technique. Stop and chop technique. And then go for direct chop. Thank you very much for your attention.